This is Rick Hall, and on Good Friday this year, April 2nd, 2021, I was asked to do a 10-minute teaching on one of the same sayings of Jesus, the one from John 19, 26 to 27, that when Jesus then saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. So initially when I did the teaching, I had been teaching in the county jail once a week for 19 years, doing an hour teaching. And so when I did this uh, 10-minute teaching on uh, Jesus giving his mother's care to the disciple John, I talked at a really fast pace. So we had some technical issues on uh, getting the the teaching saved. So I used PowerPoint and I uh, expanded the teaching a little bit because the information is important. The things I looked at in studying, uh, of course, was the seven sayings of Jesus, Behold your mother and behold your son. But as I researched, I found out that Mary and the brothers of Jesus uh, became disillusioned over time, and uh, and they had uh, unbelief that uh, that he was the Son of God. And I'll and I'll talk about the seven reasons for that, and I'll also talk about the seven times that Jesus said uh, about his mothers and brothers, it's more important to love God more than your family, and. Uh, Actually, to, to say the the one who doesn't love God more than his family cannot be his disciple. So the relationship that Jesus had with his uh, mother Mary is that he was proud of her. God selected her because she knew about God. She knew about the covenant, the promises. And she realized she had a destiny as probably a 15-year-old girl. Uh, this is the the story told in in Luke one twenty six to fifty six in the Amplified about how the angel Gabriel was sent from the presence of God to the town of Galilee uh, named Nazareth uh, came to Mary. He said, "Hail, O favored one, endued with grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed, favored of God are you before all other women." She was greatly troubled, disturbed, and confused. Angel tried to reassure her, "Do not be afraid, Mary." You have found grace, free, spontaneous, absolute favor, and loving kindness with God. And listen, you're going to become pregnant. You're going to give birth to a son, and his name will be Jesus. And he will be great, eminent. He's going to be the son of the Most High God. And the Lord God is going to give him the throne of his forefather David. He's going to reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages, and of his reign there will be no end. So for a 15-year-old girl, this was uh, fairly startling. It continues on, Luke 1, 34 to 38. Mary wonders, uh, I don't understand how this is going to happen because she hasn't had sexual intercourse with any man. The angel says, the Holy Spirit is going to come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you like a shining cloud. So the holy, pure, sinless offspring which shall be born to you, will be called the Son of God. And, and oh, by the way, it was impossible for your relative Elizabeth in her old age to, to get pregnant, conceive a son, but she's six months pregnant. The key is that with God, nothing is ever impossible. No word from God shall be without power or possible fulfillment, whether that's healing, whether that's wisdom, whether that's redemption, Nothing is impossible for God. You find the promise that deals with your situation. You claim it out loud. And by faith, uh, as soon as you pray, you believe that you received it. Mark 11, 23 and 24. And you shall have it. Mary exercised her faith. Said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. If she had not cooperated with the angel... God would have raised up somebody else to be the mother of, of Jesus, but she exercised her faith. I, she realized that she was fulfilling prophecy from Isaiah 7. Uh, there's going to be a, a young woman who's unmarried, a virgin, 
who's going to conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Also, uh, there's scriptures talking about that uh, Jesus is going to be the offspring of David and come from Bethlehem. So, so it's the in the seven saints of Jesus from the cross, the one I was given was, Behold your mother and John, behold your son. And from that moment, he took Mary into his house. Why did God choose Mary? First of all, she knew God's promises. And, and when she was uh, under the, the Holy Spirit anointing, she speaks for 10 verses, Luke 1, 47 to 55. And she knows the covenant. She knows God's power. She said, My soul magnifies and extols the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So Mary, as a 15-year-old girl, realized that she needed the Savior. That didn't change just because of the traditions of men. He's looked upon me upon my low uh, station and humiliation. And from now on, all generations of all ages will call me blessed and declare me happy and to be envied. For he who is almighty has done great things for me. He's done great things for us too. Holy is his name. He's to be venerated, praised for his purity, his majesty, his glory, and his mercy and compassion and kindness towards the miserable and afflicted is upon those who fear him with godly reverence from generation to generation and age to age. So it's up to us to have a godly fear and reverence of God. She continues on. Uh, God has shown strength. He's made his might with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the haughty in and by the imagination and purpose and designs of their hearts. He has put down the mighty and the proud from their thrones. He's exalted those who humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God. This is the due season that he was uh, exalted us. God has filled and satisfied the hungry with good things. He's He's a good God. He's rich. He sent away the empty-handed without a gift. And he has laid hold of a servant Israel. He's laid hold of me and of you to help us to, to complete his cause in remembrance of his mercy, even as he promised to our forefathers to Abraham and his descendants forever. So Mary knew God, knew the covenant, knew the promises, and she was the one holding Jesus, rocking him, telling him about the covenant and help train him in the way that he should go. Also, the prophet, uh, prophet Simeon uh, prophesied that a sword would pierce Mary's heart. I think this helped set up part of the disillusion because she knew the pain was coming. Luke t- uh, 2, 25 to 35, uh, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and he was righteous and devout. He was cautiously and carefully observing the divine law. He was looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. He's trusting God's promises. The Holy Spirit had divinely revealed to him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One himself. And prompted by the Holy Spirit, he went into the temple enclosure, And when the the parents brought in the little child Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law, circumcision on the eighth day, Simeon took him up in his arms and praised and thanked God. And and this, maybe, maybe he got a revelation to go to the temple on a specific day. Normally, uh, you have to wait out. Uh, Maybe he went to the temple uh, every day for, for months. And until the Holy Spirit finally re- revealed that this is the Christ child. So he prays and thanks God because he's happy. He said, now, Lord, you have released your servant to die, to depart this world in peace according to your word. Because you fulfilled your promise with my own eyes, I have seen the Messiah. I have seen your salvation, which you have ordained and prepared before the presence of all people a light for the revelation to the Gentiles to disclose what was before unknown, to bring praise and honor and glory to your people Israel. And his legal father, Joseph, and his mother were marveling at what was said. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, Behold, this child Jesus is appointed and destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel. Whether you believe or disbelieve, it's your choice. And for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, 
that the secret thoughts and purposes of many hearts may be brought out and disclosed. It's a law out of the abundance of what's in your heart, your mouth is going to speak. So we're going to look at, did Mary become disillusioned with God? And I think there's seven reasons that we can talk about. First of all, there was great fanfare with Jesus' birth. The angel Gabriel showing up saying that that she's going to give birth to the Son of God. There was a star in the sky. There were shepherds who came from the field to the cave. There were wise men that came two years later to the house that they were living in. Jesus is two years old. He's, He's walking. He's talking. He's feeding himself. Uh, they saw visions. And then Jesus, just like other great men, he was obscure for 30 years in a small town in Nazareth. Uh, the, the, the tour guides in Israel told Perry Stone that Nazareth only had uh, 30 families. It was off the beaten path. The only thing that they had was a well there. So 30 families, It's everybody knows everybody's business. They all grew up together. Uh, he was a carpenter. He was not a priest. He didn't do any miracle until the age of 30. We know that because it, when it talks about the wedding of Canaan, it says this is the first miracle that Jesus did. So so just like, just like Moses, uh, he was given a vision that he would deliver the people. He was obscure on the backside of a mountain in a remote area, tending sheep for 40 years. King David was anointed at age 17, saying that he would be king of Israel. He was obscure, raising sheep for 13 years. He was running from Saul for his life. Joseph was given a vision that he would be a deliverer, that the the sheaths and the sun and the moon and the stars would bow down to him. He was in prison, obscure, for 13 years. So the big buildup, but then there's nothing happening for years and years and years. Uh, number three, Joseph was gone. We don't know what happened. Last time we hear about Joseph, uh, uh, Jesus is 12 years old. They go to the temple, and uh, that's the last time we hear about him. So so Mary is a single mom. She has at least seven kids. Jesus, uh, there's four stepbrothers that list them by name. And it, and it talks about his sister, so at least two could have had more. She's a single mom. I think when Jesus went to the temple, number four, and he whipped the money changers, turned over the table, released the animals, I think that was a great embarrassment for Mary. I think uh, she was criticized by her neighbors. I believe she was criticized by the, the, the priest. Also, the, the priest, uh, they accused Mary and Jesus of fornication uh, in the small town of 30 families, actually. At the bottom line, only God and Mary knew that she was a virgin. Joseph had to take it on faith, couldn't have intercourse with her uh, the whole time until Jesus, uh, after Jesus was born. So you see this in John 8, 31 to 47. Jesus is talking to those Jews who had believed in him. If you abide in my word, if you hold fast to my teaching, if you live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth that you know and believe and follow will set you free and keep you free. It goes on, verse 40. Jesus is talking, if you were truly Abraham's children, then you would do the works of Abraham. You would follow his example and do as Abraham did. But now instead you are wanting and seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. This is not the way Abraham acted. You are doing the works of your own father. And they said to him, We are not illegitimate children and born out of fornication. We have one father, even God. We have one father, even God. And so uh, forty years, 30 years later, they're still accusing Jesus of being born out of wedlock, being a bastard child. Number six, uh, his family, Mary and the brothers, did not believe in Jesus. They didn't attend his meetings. They stood outside. And uh, we'll see also that the community rejected Jesus. I'll show you in the next two verses, uh, Matthew 13 and Mark 6, uh, that they they were caused to stumble and fall. And here's a, a verse from the NIV. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James and Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters? Could be two or more. And the Jews, they took offense at him. The Amplified goes uh, a little farther on 
on uh, Mark 6, verse 3. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas, Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here among us? And they took offense at him. They were hurt. That is, they disapproved of him. And it hindered the community from acknowledging his authority. And they were caused to stumble and fall because of their unbelief. And because the Bible also said that uh, when the Christ comes, nobody will know where he comes from. Even though it said very clearly he's going to come from Bethlehem. So when you think about the seven sayings of Jesus, they're only listed in seven references. Uh, three of them are mentioned one time in Luke. Three of them are mentioned one time in John. And and the one uh, statement, I thirst, is listed in only two Gospels, Matthew and Mark. Seven times uh, Jesus talks about references. says you've got to love the Lord your God more than your family or you cannot be my disciple. Uh, so it talks in Matthew 19 about people leaving their houses, their brothers, their fathers, their sisters, their mother lands for my name's sake. will receive a hundred times more brothers, sisters, mother, father lands. will inherit eternal life. Mark 10 adds that uh, you're going to get more houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and lands. And you're going to get persecution with it. But in the age to come, you'll get eternal life. Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me, Jesus says, and does not hate his own father and mother in the sense of indifference to or relative disregard for them in comparison with his attitude towards God, and likewise his wife and his children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So it sounds like that there was tension in the family because they did not believe in him. Luke eighteen twenty nine to 30, he said to them, I say to you truly, there is no one who has left houses or wives or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times more in this world and in the coming age eternal life. So, he's also strong about saying that his mother and brothers are those who listen to the word of God and do it. Here's three references that talk about Jesus is having a meeting and, and his family is not even there. And, and I am a partner with Perry Stone Ministries. He talks all the time about his mom being on the front row, how she supports him, gives her honor, says how she works in the ministry at 86 years old. And does, and so his mother and his brothers aren't even attending his meeting. They show up, they wait outside, they expect Jesus to stop his meeting and go outside to talk to them. And he says, who's my mother and my brothers? It's the ones who are sitting here, who are eager to learn from my instruction. Said it, says it in Matthew twelve forty six to 49. Says it in Mark 31. His mother and his brothers came. They're standing outside. They sent word for him. Jesus, we're here. Come see us. And, and the crowd says, Jesus, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside. They're asking for you. He says, who is my brother and my brothers? See, the ones who are listening to the word of God. Luke 18 is more emphatic. Uh, I mean, Luke 8, I'm sorry, 19 to 21. Then Jesus' mother and brothers came along toward him, and they could not get to him because of the crowd. And it was told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, desiring to have an interview with you while you're teaching. Are you kidding me? I'll see you later. I'll be there for dinner, but right now I'm busy doing God's work. He answered the people, my mother and brothers are those who listen to the word of God and do it. So I think there's dysfunction in the family. I think they rejected him. That's what it sounds like to me. I think he felt the sting of rejection just like uh, uh, Joseph got from his brothers, like David got from his brothers. All the time they're growing up. All they hear is about the, the stories of the angels, the shepherds in the cave, the wise men in the house, the visions. He's the son of God. They don't see any evidence. Nothing for 30 years. He's in a small town. No miracles. 
listen to this disrespectful tone in John 7, 3 to 5. His brothers are talking to Jesus, leave here, go into Judea, so that your disciples there may also see the works that you do. This is no place for you, for no one does anything in secret if he wishes to be conspicuous and secure publicity. If you must do these things, if you must act like this, show yourself openly and make yourself known unto the world. For even his brothers did not believe in or adhere to or trust in or rely on him either. I think the the reason that Jesus chose John to care for Mary is to protect her from the brothers in belief. Here's a couple of examples that I, I use in the teaching uh, about obeying God to hear, receive, love, and obey. John is talking about keeping God's commandments, obeying his instructions. You will abide in my love. You will live on in it just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments and live on in his love. John 15, 20. Remember I told you, a servant is not greater than his master, is not superior to them. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, obeyed my teachings, they will also keep and obey yours. John is solid on his doctrine, on his faith. John 17, 6, Jesus, high priestly prayer. He's talking to the Father. I have manifested your name. I have revealed your very self, your real self to the people that you've given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. They have obeyed and kept your word right before all of the disciples leave, run afraid to their own homes, except for John. John was the only one at the cross with him. So that's the reason he chose John. Here's examples from 1 John 2.4. John is saying, whoever says, I know him, Jesus, uh, or the Father, I recognize, I understand, I'm acquainted with him, but fails to keep and obey his commandments, his teachings, is a liar. And the truth of the gospel is not in him. First John 3, 6, no one who abides in him, who lives and remains in communion and obedience to him, deliberately, knowingly, and habitually commits and practices sin. No one who habitually sins has either seen him or known him, recognized, perceived, and understood him, or has had an spiritual acquaintance with him. John knew how to trust and obey God, and that's why Jesus chose John to take care of Mary. Uh, I found out in doing the study, uh, not only, I mean, I knew John was the only disciple at the cross, uh, but he was about uh, age 26 when he was following Jesus. He died about A.D. 100. Uh, and, and he wrote five books of the, uh, the Gospel. Uh, he wrote five Bible books. The Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. All within five years of A.D. 95. Uh, which is roughly 63 years after the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Uh, we, we talked about Mary, that, uh, that she knew God, that, that she exercised her faith. Let it be done to me according to what you have said, the angel. I think Mary's faith, after being dissolutioned, it returned at the wedding of Can, uh, Canaan because Jesus had been out in the wilderness for 40 days, came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. She recognized the anointing on him, and and... It's not even her uh, wedding for, for her kids. She's just a guest there and, and realizes that the, the, the bride and groom have won, run out of wine. The celebration lasted for a week. It would be a major embarrassment in the community that they ran out of food and wine for this week-long celebration. She turns to Jesus and said, they have no wine. And Jesus says, uh, woman, what is that to me? This is not my time. So Jesus had a time uh, and an event already set where he was going to show his power as the Son of God. But God cannot uh, turn away from faith. It takes faith to please God. And, and Mary, full of faith and full of the Spirit, turns to the servants and says, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. That's the same instruction that we should use today. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, you don't understand. He says give $25 to a, to a neighbor. You don't know that they just lost their job. They have no food. They have a couple of kids. And, and uh, you have to obey promptly, 
and and completely and trust God whether you find out the answer or not trust God that he knows what he's doing by the time Jesus was resurrected and walked among the disciples for 40 days in Acts I realized for the first time that in Acts 1 14 it says all of these disciples with their minds in full agreement devoted themselves steadfastly to prayer waiting together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers so by the time that the day of Pentecost came in Acts 1 and Acts 2 through 4 that the brothers were there in the upper room with the, the 120 and the mother of Jesus and it's interesting to note uh, Jesus stepbrother James was raised as a carpenter for 30 years and and this carpenter who was not a, a Levi or a priest he wrote the book of James he became the lead rabbi in the Jerusalem synagogue and in the Council of Jerusalem in Acts 15 when they talked about the Gentiles didn't have to be circumcised an external sign uh, just not eat meat offered to idols to avoid all sexual impurity not taste animal blood he fulfilled those leadership roles uh, with a background training as a carpenter that's the grace of God and so it's the it's the spirit of the living God moving working through John to to take care of Mary and she did come back to the faith so thank you uh, appreciate your listening and God bless you